thank you dr shivshankar and dr meena and uh, thank you dr joseph bosco for a great talk i am actually going to talk about the total knee arthroplasty for post traumatic arthritis with hardware around knee i'm going to provide you with, with some tips and tricks uh, to overcome the various challenges which we, which i'm going to highlight so um, uh so it is um, this is a history of a 43 year old male who was operated somewhere else he had a distal femur and proximal tibial fractures and uh, then he was taken up for surgery and the surgeon removed the implants by that time the patient had lost about 900 ml blood we gave cast for 6 weeks he had apparently damaged the uh, medial collateral ligament and the patellar tendon uh, the uh, it, the total knee was postponed due to prolonged surgery and blood loss and uh, patellar tendon injury and he had to after plaster of 6 weeks had to undergo tka with a constrained prosthesis so this is just to impress upon you that these are difficult challenges and can should not be taken lightly so total knee arthroplasty in post traumatic arthritis with hardware on the knee is challenging as you just saw uh, the arthritis is usually associated with stiffness and the um, the post traumatic arthritis is the third most common cause of total knee after primary osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis and this trauma could be actually um, due to various mechanisms or it could be uh, the uh, due to osteotomy so the fractures could be intra articular or extra articular and could involve all the bones around the knee the cause of arthritis could be the direct cartilage damage with necrosis of the cartilage cells uh, you know that would happen typically in a case like this or it could be because of the chronic damage following the alteration of the normal limb axis so uh, this uh, is why we always say that take the full length x rays um, uh, uh, and it's not uncommon to uh, miss out these fractures in short films then associated injuries are common for example the ligamentous laxity and the meniscal injuries so we know that the total knee arthroplasty is a solution for established arthritis which is basically end stage arthritis with debilitating pain severe deformity and stiffness and compromised activities of daily living and like i said total knee arthroplasty is challenging it's a challenge to both the surgeon and the patient surgeon because it is a demanding technique patient because they may get lower functional results the choice of implant is important because most patients are relatively younger and then post operative rehabilitation because of the various issues with stiffness muscle wasting etc etc are also important so let's talk about the dozen a dozen challenges to overcome in this clinical scenario so first of all any i mean the dictum in orthopedic surgery is if any orthopedic surgery fails the first thing to rule out is infection all of them most of them are actually have hardware so always exclude latent infection get in erythrocyte sedimentation rate and the c reactive protein and you can try an aspiration and uh, many times you don't get anything in aspiration but esr and crp is high and i would have no hesitation in uh, taking out the implant subjecting them to uh, sonication taking deep cultures from the joint and putting in a uh, spacer and doing it in two stages rather than to risk infection the second challenge is laxity so you must understand that you need to have a good idea about the integrity of the ligaments you must differentiate between the true instability and pseudo instability which may be secondary to the bone loss and you must get the proper x rays and ct scan if required the third challenge is the stiffness the stiffness is almost invariably present in these patients uh, and in a stiff knee it's extremely important to know and the integrity of the quadriceps tendon and the patellar tendon and the power of the uh, of the extensor mechanism uh, the position of patella is important patella baja or patella alta and then we know that the preoperative range of motion influences the post operative range of motion so you must counsel the patient accordingly the fourth one is actually to uh, palpate the vessels it's not particularly for uh, uh, for the post traumatic arthritis it should be a dictum everywhere but then it is particularly important uh, to palpate vessels um, and then popliteal anterior tibial posterior tibial and then if you have any uh, uh, problem with palpating the vessels and you suspect there could be a problem the ct angiography must be done to document 
in the cases. The fifth challenge is the previous scar, the route which the previous surgeon took to fix those fractures. So the scars will affect the exposure. Uh, we all know that we should use the most recent and the most lethal scar because the oxygen vascular and vascularization of the uh, medial flap is preserved. A pre prior transverse incision may be crossed with a longitudinal incision at a right angle, but many times uh, in a longitudinal incision, you may not be able to use the previous incisions. You must make sure that there is at least a seven centimeter bridge between the, uh, between the previous incision and the new incision. The sixth challenge is the exposure. Now, these are often stiff, they are scarred. The exposure depends on the previous scar and the range of motion. You may need uh, an extensile approach, you may need a quad snip, you may need a quadriceps plasty, or you may need a tibial tubercle osteotomy depending on the situation. So there is extensive soft tissue scarring. There will be adherent tissue in the gutter causing stiffness. You must start with you know, debriding the gutter, removing the hypertrophic um, synovium, uh, taking care of the intraarticular fibrosis, and uh, you must release cautiously the adhesions between the articular surfaces and the gutter to gradually get the range of motion without actually causing a fracture of the osteoporotic bone or avulsing the tibial tuberosity uh, in case of a poor bone quality. The next challenge is the presence of the hardware. Now, you must identify the implants which need uh, removal. Implants have often been in place for many years and the removal may be difficult. And I'll show you some examples. And you must always take care of the stress risers which you are going to leave once you remove the implant. So the principle which I follow is I do not fight hard with the hardware. So only the implants which are coming in the way of my TKR are to be removed. Uh, that makes the surgery easier minimizes complications, minimizes blood loss, duration of surgery, maintains the existing bone strength, prevents the stress risers. But then you may need additional techniques such as, or additional equipment, uh, such as navigation or metal cutting work. So this is an example. This was a 66 year old male, 18 months post trauma. And you can see that, you know, if I remove all these plates, I have stress risers right till here. And then it is said that if you want something very difficult done, give it to the laziest person and you'll find a shortcut to do it. So this is what we did. We removed the screw from the distal part. We uh, 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 used the Midas to cut the plate. And then I used uh, a handheld uh, accelerometer, ba accelerometer based uh, um, uh, navigation system. Uh, so I didn't really need a rod and you can see the alignment here. And, uh, you know, you can do this kind of surgery pretty uh, quickly without, uh, you know, causing too much of damage and blood loss to the patient. Now, this is a 50-year-old female, had a tibial tattoo fracture, was fixed, and then she developed uh, osteoarthritis, needed knee replacement, was disabled. So, all I did was to remove one screw, which was coming in the way, and I did, um, and I could actually bypass this screw during the keel preparation. And sometimes, you know, in order to avoid a stress riser, I use a knee implant, tibial implant, which has got a little longer keel. So I, at the most, I would have been forced to remove this uh, uh, if required, if this was coming, were coming in the way. The other advantage of leaving an implant like this is that, you know, if I remove everything here, and put in a stem, if I get a periprosthetic fracture, it will be uh, at the tip here, it will be type B. Now, if a fracture occurs here and I remove this, pla uh, this plate, it becomes actually a type C. And I can, in fact, do an internal fixation without any problem. So I don't see any harm at all in leaving the, uh, the implant in place. Uh, so another example, 65-year-old male operated elsewhere um, uh, five years back had a coronary artery disease three years after the surgery. Now, he was not a great uh, surgical risk. Um, uh, he, uh, uh, I mean, nobody would have liked to do a very major and prolonged surgery. Um, he had had the ORIF and uh, bone, uh, bone grafting with the bone graft substitute. And uh, this is how it failed. And he landed with the, uh, with the, uh, surge, uh, with the arthritis. And all that I did was to remove uh, one uh, screw and uh, we could get away with uh, a total knee arthroplasty, uh, which is um, uh, which you can see actually could be done 
pretty easily without um, you know really exposing too much of tibia. 57 year old female here, uh, long plate uh, for a tibial plateau fracture, and again used a stem this uh, this time, but then just removed these screws from here and uh, uh, the uh, le left the rest of the plate, and this is the long leg X-rays of the same patient. Now, um, a few cases about the femoral side. Uh, look at this 56-year-old female who had undergone uh, surgery on the, um, on the femoral side. Um, and, uh, you know, you can see that uh, developed the arthritis here. And uh, again, this is intraoperative pictures of uh, total knee replacement being done with the handheld navigation because uh, decided not to remove all this plate and then could actually get away without removing this and had a good alignment. And uh, these are the postoperative x-rays and this is the standing scanogram of the same patient. Uh, another example, patient had a Hoffa fracture uh, and uh, you can see the, uh, the uh, uh, implants in situ. Uh, only the implants which were coming the way were removed and this screw on the femoral side which was not coming in the way i just left it as it is challenge number nine is the taking care of the deformity and the bone cuts and here the principles of uh, varus and valgus deformity correction apply just like you see here if a line along the distal tibial axis intersects the tibial plateau, uh, it can be corrected intraarticularly and if it passes outside, it needs an extraarticular correction and all those principles uh, have to be followed here. The tenth challenge is to choose your implant. Uh, we have done everything from unicondylar knee arthroplasty to the uh, CR, UC or PS uh, knee with or without stem, uh, total knee arthroplasty with bone graft, augments, uh, the constrained knees, the cones and the hinges. So always keep the implant with uh, one constraint higher than what you are expecting to get away with. This was a patient with anterior medial osteoarthritis. He had a nail put in uh, a long time back. And because uh, it was difficult to put in a rod, although microplasty instruments were available, I went for the, the, the previous generation instruments for the Oxford, uh, uh, Oxford uh, partial knee replacement and could get away with the partial knee arthroplasty. Um, this is uh, a paper on... Uh, um, knee replacement in uh, chronic post-traumatic cases, which uh, said that a UK can be performed in post-traumatic cases if one compartment is involved, deformity is correctable, and the ligaments are competent. But then in case of severe art articular combination or severe deformity, it is contraindicated. This was another patient with a malunited tibia and a femoral shaft, which had been operated. And uh, you can see that it was possible to do it with the handle navigation uh, without actually removing the implants. Another case where uh, there was a severe fracture, uh, fortunately, this was united. And, uh, you know, when I took the, uh, what I saw here was that I thought we, we had about nine millimeter bone here. So I didn't think this would have come the way. And you can see these are the distal femoral cut. You can just getting to see the threads of the dynamic hip screw and this is the um, the um, the handheld navigation and could get a good alignment and and this was actually um, could be done uh, in about 45 minutes without uh, making it too complicated and this is the long leg weight pairing uh, uh, then another patient who had a uh, 56 year old male who had distal femoral fracture which was nail and this uh, uh, nail could not be taken out. Uh, the surgeons tried hard and then they called me and uh, I just bailed them out by using this handle navigation and never removing the nail. Not all implants can be retained. This is a distal uh, non-union of distal femur with the hardware in situ. And then you have to remove everything in such a case and you may need even a hinge implant. Uh, and this was a post-operative exodus. So the algorithm is you look at the deformity that is correctable um, uh, 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 with good ligament. You can do uni or TK. If the ligaments are incompetent, we have to upgrade the constraint. Uh, and then if there's a chronic structural deformity, you may need bony releases. And if there are bony losses, you may have to do bony reconstruction. Extra articular deformity has to be addressed just as per the known algorithms. Uh, you can, in, uh, whether they influence the axis or not, and then accordingly you do the surgery. So 11th challenge is a rehabilitation. Mobilization must be started as early as poss possible. And um, the 12th and the last challenge is the complications. You must be prepared uh, uh, to uh, avoid these excessive blood loss, skin necrosis, dissidence, uh, recurrence of stiffness, extensor mechanism rupture, and, and um, particularly during the rehab. 
So um, this is a, a paper on total knee arthroplasty in post-traumatic arthritis. Uh, it showed prolonged operative time, increased length of hospital stay and readmission. And then these papers have proved that the navigation assisted techniques allow an alternative technique. Uh, another paper to suggest that uh, navigation can be extremely useful in these cases uh, without hardware removal, like in this paper also. Um, poorer results compared to osteoarthritis have been reported. And then of course, um, this one, said 20% complication rate, which is very high. So beware, these are the um, uh, cases uh, which, which have been uh, shown with what kind of injuries associated with excellent results, whereas the tendon disruptions and all have got very poor results. Um, uh, this is a paper which is, uh, 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 which is accepted on general of knee surgery on our series on this. So to summarize, osteoarthritis with hardware is challenging condition. TKR is demanding, risk of complications is high, goals remain the same, correct implant positioning, limb alignment, Planning is an essential element of this surgery. Exclude latent infection. Adequate considerations regarding approach. Choice of implant and level of concern depends on bone loss and status of ligament. Use an algorithm and patient must be informed regarding the possibility of poor outcome. Thank you very much for your